Okay. Hi. Uh, good morning, everybody. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about Anerdrum. Anerdrum is such a um, he's such an interesting character, or well, I should say, he's such an interesting artist. His uh, style it has developed throughout the years. He started with a more of a, um, I would say, the Dali. Um, Caravaggio type of style and then later on it sort of developed more into a Rembrandt uh, sort of obsession. There are a few things that I uh, love over this man. He's pretty uh, fascinating, especially when he, you know, sometimes when you're listening to an interview of an artist or a podcast or something, sometimes his name pops up um, uh, randomly and, and a lot of people uh, tend to uh, have great respect towards him. So one of the stories that I liked about him is like he has this uh, barn. Well, he actually uh, lives in this island in Norway and he has this uh, sort of like farm houses, but there's actually no farms around. It's pretty much uh, small things, small farm uh, like uh, life that he's living. He really doesn't like electricity and he um, likes to read um, philosophy. He's just put all his energy into reading and like uh, painting basically uh, and I kind of love that aspect of him and the, the fact that he just uh, he just chose four colors to paint is another uh, thing that is fascinating to me he read somewhere well Leonardo and Rembrandt they basically use earth tones who who um, you know you can really make the colors that we have today like cadmiums and like bright uh, brilliant uh, colors like this so he actually uh, adopted this technique from Rembrandt by using a very limited palette which is uh, uh, black white red and yellow and with that he tried to expand this palette as much as possible by creating all of this uh, scenarios and his in his paintings so uh, one of the anecdotes that I heard from him um, was that he has his barn and uh, he has like hundreds and hundreds of, of, of Titian books he collects Titian and Rembrandt books he has like uh, Titian and Rembrandt books from all over the world and, and such a cool little um, fact about him he's also a Norwegian artist Usually Norwegian Norwegian uh, culture, they are, tend to be a little cold or reserved. For the most part, they're really hard workers and they, they love design and like architecture and all these things. And they were really influenced by German uh, philosophy, uh, which is straight lines, clean metals and, and industrial design. So Onnerdrum is uh, more of a romantic, more of a traditionalist, uh, his art work is mostly uh, guided through the the ancient philosophies of, of nature and uh, unity and, and fluidity and movement and beauty and, and composition construction and all of these things um, he uh, he really is rejecting uh, what um, uh, expressionist uh, expressionism and modernism is about and uh, he really really dismisses uh, this type of art as childish so which is another like interesting point from his part he took this stance and it's kind of difficult to go with it so what is my opinion I think well I think ordinary drums definitely has balls you know he's pretty brave in the sense that he uh, really rejected everything everybody he doesn't really need anybody's opinion uh, he doesn't need anybody um, to sell his work. He, his work is pretty famous and people really gravitate towards him. Um, he is not so much about his philosophy, even though I, I kind of like his philosophy, but it's more um, about the determination to make it in this world by believing in something and sticking to it and trying to perfect it. So he has spent most of his life trying to become better than Rembrandt, better than Titian, and, and that's uh, an admirable thing. So there are a few things that um, it's hard to see if you don't paint. When you look at Rembrandt's uh, paintings, if you don't really paint, you can see this and say, it's not a big deal. I've seen people make things online or, or, or with acrylic or drawing or like digitally, and, and you can make better self-portraits like that. But the genius of Rembrandt is his ability to 
create a layered structure of his soul basically you know when you look at Rembrandt's uh, little details you can see layers after layers after layers of sort of failures or like determination or something to push through and and to achieve to push something as hard as you can push it and it's, it's such a hard such a difficult thing to do when it comes to painting because painting is it's like a, an investment you invest all your time your money your 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 attention and and uh, sometimes things just fail and they fall apart miserably but uh, Rembrandt never let it I mean he never let that um, stop him so that's that's his genius that's Rembrandt's uh, genius the, the the way he pushed these paintings to the maximum um, and, and even if they were wrong because there's some of his paintings are slightly off like anatomically we have to remember that that it's really difficult to paint abstractly in 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 a in an organized manner and uh, so that's something that on red drum is taking into account and you can see uh, some of his playfulness and some of his like intelligence when it comes to brush making and strokes and like little details his fascination with the titian um even though from a paint from a pictorial or from a from a material point of view maybe that could be exciting to somebody like i remember one time i went to the chicago art institute and i saw this painting which is called i think it's called a uh, mist uh morning mist or something like that uh, which is it's just one sort of squarish painting it looks like a square sort of and uh, it is probably like 48 by or 36 or 48 inches by 36 or 48 inches something like that and uh, when you look at this painting in my opinion that's the most beautiful painting of the entire collection of, of the Chicago Art Institute is is my in my opinion is one of my all-time favorite paintings of all time yeah and when you look at it, it there's barely anything like it's layers upon layers of really thick toned down tonal um different there's so many different variants of of cyan and and, and aquamarine and and uh, cobalt blue uh, um um ultramarine blue um purple pink salicylene and other but they're, you, they're almost imperceptible like when you look at it it's really thick but there's nothing it's like if you step away it looks almost grayish white but when you get up close you see all of these little flickers of of light and and there's such a thing that it's sort of like a, it was like a punch in my in my in my in my face it was like a punch in my face when i i looked at it really up close and i think that's the reason why a lot of these great artists are really fascinated by this uh you know like italian artists uh as, such as titian because at the end of his life he just didn't care anymore he just put everything that he learned into creating these things and see if it could hold together and most of the things feel like they're vibrating they're, they're they think they feel like they're flaking and that's another concept that um, I really like uh, from Odd Nerdrum's perspective he has in his there's another amazing thing that I, I heard from him I think it's called uh, figurativas 2018 or 2015 where they're but I'm, I'm gonna put it on the link below uh, when they're discussing about uh, using photographies in painting you know should I should you use should you uh, use photographies in painting or is it wrong is it right and it, and it has uh, there was a little discussion with between uh, Jacob Collins and, and um, Antonio Lopez and um, this German uh, artist who is pretty amazing they're all like monsters in terms of painting and yet they are so different in in certain aspects they're just they what they believe in they put it uh, in in the canvas and well that's what makes him great you know his perspective is what makes him great and his perspective even though we've seen it before like art is not is it has never been about creating something new or breaking some new technology or like inventing something new uh, painting specifically has always been about the soul of the 
artist, uh, what he lives in, his convictions, his his personality, his uh, life, uh, it's a little bit of uh, everything. And Audinodrum is such an um, interesting artist for uh, the fact that he struggled for so long. They're, like the government tried to take his properties and, and he got into tax evasions and, and all sorts of problems and he's always fighting against uh, the system, the art collection, and the galleries, and all of these things. Because his opinion, they have always called him a tacky artist or or a, an antiquated a dinosaur, or something that is painting things that nobody really cares. Like, you know, like the impressions that something that was really beautiful to us, but at the same time was really um, dangerous. He, they removed the color black and they put all of these restrictions in in, in painting that shouldn't be you know like uh just because you use black or it, just because you're painting like rembrandt doesn't mean you're not allowed to paint doesn't mean you're not allowed to be an artist like just because he's doing these things they they call him a um an imposter a, a fake a phony but his his art is actually pretty beautiful and and if you paint you will sort of see this information that is uh, passed down to you like when you look at some of his marks um, there's a lot of things that uh, sort of uh, pushes you uh, to get better to be better and uh, there's also many people who say that an ordinary drum is, is is not a talent and all that but to be honest if you compare it with like some of the paintings by let's say Picasso you know he did 114,000 or more paintings uh, compared to like Bugaro who 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 did like um, less than 900 or maybe a little bit more than 900. Um, you can see the difference between uh, what it takes to to push something, uh, what it takes to be honest with your own self and, and trying to push your own ability into creating something for not only for your own sake or for your own sanity, but for the good of others, you know? That's the other thing that I love about Adnardrum. He takes people um, from all over the world and he trains them and he he, he, um, he adopts them almost. And, and he's sort of like a, a father figure. And, and it's pretty funny because he's, in his personality, he seems like really cold and, and distant and... and, and and uh, mad, you know, but but at the same time, there are like other artists who who mention him uh, as being uh, like full of uh, fire and passion for painting and and all of these things. Just like uh, it's admirable, um, regardless of if you like his art or not. Uh, there are like aspects of his life that are really admirable. I like, I love the simplicity in which he has um, transformed his life he, he made it so simple and and he just put all of his energy into one single thing which is just painting and if he does something else like reading or something or farming or something like that is is like secondary everything is secondary to painting and what other um, reason do you need to to um, to um, to to put him in in good uh, steam in a, in a good place in my in my book is is uh, pretty amazing and re remarkable what he's doing. So the other thing that is uh, interesting, he has won many awards, but he has won m so many enemies because of his opinions about what the nature of painting should be and if something should be based on beauty and reality and, and proportions and a study of, of, of the craftsmanship of painting or if it should be about expression and dynamism and um, and like exploring the world and all of these things that the, the new school uh, teaches which is absolutely fine like there's no nothing wrong with any of those two um, unless you really box yourself in um, so the only thing, in my opinion, I really love Adnardrum, but I don't know exactly how how much of a discriminatory artist is he when it comes to other types of uh, painters. They say like the Kooning or or um 
or uh, Jackson Pollock or or s some of these like uh, expressionist artists, uh, modern, postmodern artists, and all of this. I uh, I I'm afraid that his his uh, his point of view would not be as nice. Um, regardless of his point of view and and his position in in um, when it, his position about other artists. I think he's a fantastic artist. He's really strong, um, very um, professional. Uh, he, I heard that he has many mansions, set like seven mansions. One in in Paris, one in Greece, one in in, in I think in Italy, and another one in, in in Norway. And those are things that are fascinating. But I really love the story of the barn full of hundreds and hundreds of Titian uh, books. It's amazing. 